Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on electrostatics. This is video number 27, and I'm going to discuss the work done to move a charge. There are many videos previous to this which are relevant in one form or another, and I've listed some of them on the left-hand side of your screen. So the topic of work done to move a charge is very important. If you think back to our study of mechanics, essentially what happens if you're talking about conservative forces is that when you perform work, you can later get the energy back out. So the energy gets stored somewhere, like you might think of gravitational potential energy, for example. What we'll find here is we get the same thing. When we group charges together, there is energy stored someplace, and when we disassemble the grouping of charges, we get the energy back. So hopefully at the end of this video, you'll be able to suggest where the energy is in fact being stored. So you first of all need to move on to move back to video number 20. We saw there that when we look at the work done against a force, it's the same as computing the integral of a to b of f dot dl. Of course, when you plug in the electrostatic force, it's minus q outside of the integral of e dot dl. I'm sure you can see at this stage that in fact we have the electric potential. So we evaluated at b and a, so two particular limits. Now you should know at this stage that we like to define the zero of electric potential at infinity. So if we put that as a reference point, we find out that the work done divided by the charge is in actual fact the electric potential. The units of this are joules per coulomb. So this leads us to say that the physical meaning of electric potential is that it is the electric potential energy per unit charge. Now let's move on to the energy required to assemble a grouping of charges. Let's say we have in space a charge positive Q sub 1 and it has its electric field as we would, as we would uh, um, assume. So we want to bring the charge positive Q sub 2 into its electric field, say to this point here. This means of course we must perform work against the electric force field in order to do that. So using our equation over here let's calculate the work required. So the work done in bringing charge Q sub 2 in is the charge Q sub 2 multiplied by the electric potential of charge Q sub 1. So plugging in the values we get this particular expression here, pretty straightforward expression. Note by the way here we have the magnitude of the separation vector between charge 1 and charge 2. So I'm going to call that the magnitude of the separation vector sub 1 2. Next if we'd like to bring in a charge Q sub 3 into the region between or into the region near charges Q sub 1 and charge Q sub 2. Note by the way I've drawn their electric field or made a stab at drawing their electric field here. This time what we need to do in order to calculate the work done to bring in charge Q sub 3 is multiply the charge Q sub 3 by the sum of the potentials for charge Q sub 1 and the charge Q sub 2. So plugging in the values there is pretty straightforward and we get the following expression here. Notice by the way the indices of the, uh, the separation vector or the magnitude of the separation vector we get 1, 3 and 2, 3. So it's pretty straightforward to work out how to accumulate more charges or to get the formula for more charges. So if we bring charge Q sub 2 but, uh, close to charge Q sub 1 we do this particular work. If we bring charge Q sub 3 again into, into those two charges we get this. And if we bring another charge Q sub 4 we get this expression here. Notice the indices for example. If we bring in charge Q sub 4, we have indices 1, 4, 2, 4, and 3, 4. So where do we go from here? The first thing we need to look at is the total work done to assemble the grouping of charges. That simply is going to be a summation. So the summation can get quite cumbersome quite quickly. In this case, we're only looking at four charges, and we have quite a number of terms. It's easier, I suppose, to look at this as the double summation. So I've written this double summation at the bottom right of your screen. Note, by the way, the order of the summation. So if i is equal to 1 to n, j also goes from 1 to n, but j must be greater than i. So if, if, you, just, if you apply that formula, you'll see that as an actual fact, it, it gives the terms which I've written up here. Now, just to rewrite that on the top left of your screen, it is a reasonably cumbersome thing to deal with because we're talking about a double summation. So what I suggest is easier is to intentionally 
double count because this this expression here doesn't double count perhaps if we if we intentionally double count and later divide by 2 it'll be easier so if we do that j starts at 1 so does i but j doesn't have to be greater than i it just does have to it has to be not equal to i so it can be perhaps less than i so let's look at some of the indices and we're talking about the indices on the magnitude of the separation vector so if we look at this expression here where we don't double count we get these sets this set here so we get 1 2 1 3 1 4 1 5 2 3 2 4 2 5 and so on and notice that we we don't get any duplicates but of course if we talk about this expression here we're now talking about these indices and we begin to get duplicates and I've highlighted the duplicate 1 2 versus 2 1 and the duplicate 1 3 versus 3 1 of course we're talking about distances between charge 1 and charge 2 so the distance what we're in to say with the indice 1 2 is the same as the indice with 2 1 so just to try and convince you if you look at the top right of your screen I've written some of the first few indices for the uh, the double counting expression so if you look closely so there's 1 2 1 3 1 4 1 5 we bring in 2 1 2 3 2 4 2 5 well immediately 2 1 is going to be a duplicate with 1 2 we can get rid of that when we bring when we go to 3 we'll find that we have duplicates 3 1 and 3 2 when we go to 4 we have duplicates 4 1 4 2 and 4 3 and so on now I suggested with this expression that we need to divide by 2 in order to get the number of uh, of um, you know contributions that we require so there are actually to there are 20 components here which could potentially contribute I say we divide by 2 so what we should in fact get is 10 expressions or 10 contributions and if you look at carefully if I get rid of all of the duplicates we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 expressions so it does seem that this in, in fact this double counting and then dividing by 2 does in fact work now we're going to keep the half and we're going to write it in a, a very suggestive way we're going to have the we're going to break it up just like I have here and if you write it in this particular way what we're after I suppose isolating is the potential due to all the other charges other than we'll say charge Q sub I and this is measured at position R sub I so really what we are after what we actually have is that the work done to bring a, a grouping of charges together is simply half outside of the sum of Q, Q sub I times the potential R sub I so where do we go from here one second now bear with me a moment well we go from here by looking at it I suppose and saying well where is the energy being stored at the moment it seems like the energy is being stored in the charge so as we bring groupings of charge together we're talking about a conservative electric force and as a result the energy is being stored in the electric field no excuse me it's not being stored in the electric field it's being stored in the electric charge and we'll see later on that in actual fact it may also be thought as being stored in the electric field so this is the work done when you assemble the group of charges so thanks for watching please pass it on to your friends subscribe to my channel and you might also give me a comment in the comment box below